Sure, Jaleesa Lachey, Black Street TV. Such a pleasure be here with my Morehouse brother. That's right, that's this right. This is love. We got to get them to post it on the oh, on the uh, AC <laughs> on the Morehouse.com. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. do want to, on that note, we've seen so much talent come from historically black colleges. Chadwick went to Howard. Right. Will Packers from FAM. Talk about just what do you think your Morehouse experience, Spike Lee's the Morehouse brother, kind of brought to you as you came into this industry? That, um, yeah, that I'm not alone. Mm. You know, that I'm well represented. You know, when I went to when I went to when I went to Morehouse, like just there's there's all these different kinds of you know black folks with all different kinds of experiences. I'm coming from the valley and like private mm -hmm. school, and like there's other people from all different walks of life in the same space and like believing in the same thing. And that's a lot like the set was on this on this project with Spike Lee that it was just a, a such a familiar you know, brotherly type of experience mm -hmm. that felt safe and you felt again when you feel represented like that, it just empowers you to just to be your best creatively. And with you being a lead in Spike Lee's film, it has to, I can't help but to think, I'm like, your father, Mo Better Blues, mm. 28 years ago, <laughs> and now you're the lead in a Spike film. That must feel like a full circle moment for the both of you. Uh, well, I, I, I honestly, it, for me, it was like, I got a little part of Malcolm X. I was a little kid that's, that at the yeah, end, absolutely. I got to scream out Malcolm X. So that, that was more of a full circle moment for me. But yeah, I mean, I'm a part of this great, rich history. I mean, Sam Jackson, Wesley Snipes, Giancarlo mm. Esposito, like, like all these different actors. I mean, uh, one of my favorite actors is Alfred Woodard, like man yes. or female, just yes. of all time. So, so being able to be a part of that family is just uh, is a tremendous honor. So today... May 19th, we celebrate Malcolm X's birthday because he was a great, great Afro-American. Malcolm X is you, all of you, and you are Malcolm X. I'm Malcolm X! Now let's talk about Ron Stallworth for a second. You know, a lot of us are familiar with you from Ballers, which we love your performance on Ballers, by Thank the you. way. But of course you have the connection given the athletic background, having yeah. played football. Do you feel like you had to stretch yourself in order to portray this character? Uh, I had to stretch myself on both. I mean, I'm nothing like that that ball player, and mm -hmm. I and I actually found some similarities though with with Ron and I as we were started to talk more and more uh, stuff I really can't share, but like just some very personal stuff that uh, that I saw myself as well. So, uh, but yeah, it was um, you know it's different when you're playing a real person, and he, and he's alive too. Mm -hmm. So there was a different approach. It's a period piece. It was a different time. So uh, all of that goes into the gumbo of this creativity. So uh, it was a great experience and a great opportunity to uh, to be able to 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 play Ron Starworth. Absolutely. Did he spend any time on set? Nah, not on set. But he was at the table read, and he uh, and he passed out the uh, the his membership card because he's as you know a member. He of still the has he it. He still has it. Oh my Crazy. gosh, we gotta get that yeah. like a photo, I know. Or a video. Uh, yeah, of yeah. That. Hopefully he brings it to the to the red carpet. <laughs> he's just like. <laughs> Were you nervous when he first saw the film? Yeah, I was. Like, I, I, I was going to lie to you. Yeah, I was. I was. It meant, it meant a lot for him to, and what he said to me, uh, I really appreciate it. You know, he said he loved the film, and he said nobody else could have played it, so that was great. Yeah. I say we're trapped at that pecker with a gun in my face, and he was an ass hair away from pulling the trigger. And he didn't. But he could have, and then I would have been dead. For what? Stopping some jerk-offs from playing dress-up? Flip, it's intel. Well, I'm not risking my life to prevent some rednecks from lighting a couple sticks on fire. This is the job. What's your problem? That's my problem. For you, it's a crusade. Mm -hmm. For me, it's a job. It's not personal, nor should it be. Why haven't you bought into this? Why should I? Because you're Jewish, brother. The so-called chosen people. You've been passing for a wasp. White Anglo-Saxon Protestant, cherry pie hot dog white boy. Hmm. That's what some light-skinned black folks do. They pass for white. Doesn't that hatred you've been hearing the Klan say, doesn't that piss you off? Of course it does. Then why are you acting like you ain't got skin in the game, brother? Rookie, that's my fucking business. It's our business. Now I'm going to get you your membership card so you can go to the cross burning and get in okay. deeper with these guys. Right, partner? So refreshing. And of course, I also love Adam Driver was oh, yeah. amazing. Yeah. And the relationship between you two was just incredible to watch. And it added a comedic element mm. to this to this film. But not intentionally. We weren't trying to go for comedy. You know, yeah. it, it, it's not a comedy. But there's just this natural moments that were happening between us that was so organic. And I think you see, it was a result of trust. I mm. mean, he's such a he's a fantastic actor. And it was a great moment for me because it felt like he was trusting me. 
you know, because he really know who I was and all that. So, you know, I, you know, it was it was nice to finally find that rhythm and that dance with Laura as well. Like, just the trust factor was there. So it's like I just knew where my dance partner was at all times. So when you know that, when you when you're in such you know simpatico like that, it 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 enables you to just tell truths you didn't even know you had in you. Mm. Like just finding moments that you you know you prepare for what's on the script, but you can't plan for, That's and right. you just go with. And my uh, I, in my opinion, Spike Lee is a master at recognizing energy and momentum and when these moments are happening and not to disrupt that you know if you have to go off the script if you have to go off what we thought we were going to shoot and how mm -hmm. we're going to shoot it shoot it but this is better in the service of the film mm -hmm. then we're going to go with it so it would behoove you to be prepared and no script front to back all the time because we might be shooting something we thought we shot a month ago we we're going to shoot in a month we might shoot it today mm -hmm. so just be ready and whatever he changes be ready for it and, and if you know the score you're able to do that so with that, what was the most like challenging scene for you? Of course, I think the most memorable one for me is when you're almost arrested and that whole moment with oh, Laura, yeah, and that, yeah. that's a very pivotal moment for the film. Oh, that's a good but point. what was okay. the most challenging for you? I'd say the banquet, the, the, the one I was mm. in, David Duke's detail. I don't want to give too much away. That was the hardest day, most yeah. challenging. That felt the most like, like authentic and like real. Like I just felt so real. And I called Ron afterwards and, and told him how much uh, I appreciate what he did. I can't believe he did what he did. It just it was one of those moments like when I held the card at the at the table read. That was a moment too of like how real it was and how much danger he was in and how he protected and served, you know, the right way and faced danger and racism right in the right in the face. Mm. Like literally, they were toe to toe and and he and he was unapologetic about it. Yeah, what I what I also love about on that of like facing racism, dealing with it. Between you and Adam Driver, that relationship, it kind of, I don't know if it was intentional, but Spike mm. sent a message of the Jewish community mm. and what they face and the black community and how we need to come together. What do you think the significance is for that today? Well, that was started from the first phone call when he's, he's, yell, he's yelling about what he, the, who he hates. I hate blacks. I hate this. I, so, like, a, a lot of these people, these, these cultures are included, mm. you know, when it comes to that specific hate. So it was important to to and it was and it really happened though that talk, they really had that conversation, you know and and uh, and I just I just loved that how he used it and how he cut it together. Absolutely, yeah. I'm so I'm so proud of you as a Spellman <laughs> sister. Oh, I'm like Thank we're you. out here. We're you out have here. a lot of films. Coming it's, up, it's so what, do, what what can we expect? What do we look forward to? Uh, like in the in the September near term? 18th, you can see the trailer now. Monsters and Men, totally different role. Um, again, through the eyes of an African American police officer, but in contemporary times. That's right. Thank you so much, yeah, Sean David. Me. All right. <laughs>